Okay, we continue our uh, media availability here at Martinsville Speedway, and uh, certainly a driver that is uh, no stranger to Victory Lane here at Martinsville, Denny Hamlin, joins us. He's the driver of the number 11 FedEx Freight Toyota for Joe Gibbs Racing. Uh, Denny, uh, you've had quite a week. Uh, good to see you. How you feeling? Feel good. Uh, definitely uh, ready to get going here. Very good. We'll take some questions now for Denny. If you have one, raise your hand, and uh, we'll uh, call on you and bring you the wireless mic. We'll start here with Alan and then go to Bob. Uh, Alan Kavan on NASCAR.com. Uh, I don't know how much importance you always place on practice week to week, but this week in particular, after missing last week's race, uh, I mean, how important was it to come out and set the fastest lap here in Martinsville, if, if there were any doubters? Well, we uh, it wasn't a goal to go out there and be first at practice. You know, we didn't set out to. Uh, of course, that's a it's a goal for everyone, but it's not something that we put extra effort on, uh, especially practice. But um, I, it obviously shows that uh, we're very capable uh, of winning the race this weekend, and I'm pretty sure we will. Go ahead, Bob, front row. Uh, Bob Hockris, uh, Sporting News. Um, did you say on TV that that metal had actually rusted in mm -hmm. your eye? Okay. Yep. And would, would this impact whether you'll go back to the care center again? I mean, because it seems like you, from at least what J.D. said last week, that you guys thought you would be – you weren't to the point where you thought you weren't going to be able to race. Yeah, I, I didn't think we were. Um, you know, I, I literally thought uh, on Friday that I, I was starting to get a sty. Um, it happened sometime during practice, whether it came in through the car or through the AC unit, uh, through the helmet, something. It came in through somewhere. Uh, but I don't remember the exact time when it happened. But... You know, Friday evening definitely felt you know an agitation um, right in the corner uh, to my upper eye eyelid, and so I thought I was getting a sty because it just felt like one. Um, and then Saturday uh, I woke up; it was a little worse. I went ahead and ran through practice. Uh, vision was fine, but just a lot of watering, and I didn't see any swelling uh, of the eyelid. So I was yeah, I knew it wasn't a sty at that point. Um, so I, I didn't go to the infield care center until, uh, you know, late on Saturday. I, uh, me and my girlfriend went to uh, the mall. We were shopping around, and that just – it was bothering me so much. I, I contacted uh, one of the NASCAR liaisons and s asked if anyone was still at the infield care center. They said they'd wait on me, so they waited on me. Uh, and so they looked at it. They dyed it. Uh, they put it under a black light. Didn't see any scratches. Didn't see any, anything in the eye. Um, so immediately we started f trying to figure out what would be causing it if there's nothing in it. Um, and so um, I, the only thing I could think of is I was starting to actually get a little bit stuffy on my left-hand side of my face, and my nose was running um, a little bit. So I, I mentioned to him, trying to c cover all the possibilities, that you know I showed him a CT scan from January where I had a really, really bad sinus infection. I mean, it was the worst the doctor's ever seen, and Petty's been around a really, really long time. So he, uh, he says it's the worst he's ever seen. So we took some antibiotics for a couple weeks. I started feeling better. Um, and so I never went back to him to get a scan, which I probably should have went back to Petty uh, in January after I took all the antibiotics uh, and felt better. I just assumed if I feel better, more than likely it's gone. So the only other option is uh, you know, I went to bed Saturday night, woke up Sunday, and felt twice as worse. Pain was twice as worse, and vision was you know, slightly impaired uh, over where it was Saturday. Um, so I stayed in the Info Care Center uh, for a couple hours, and you know, we tried to go through all the possibilities of what it could be, um, and really the, since they didn't see anything in it, you know, the only thing we could do is get an optometrist to come to the racetrack, which it was too late into the day for that. It was too late for me to go to one and come back in time. So, you know, everyone came to an agreement uh, that uh, the best thing for me was to, to go to the hospital and get scanned in case you know, there's tons of different possibilities, whether it would be a blood clot, anything that affects, you know, because there's more to it, but... You know, any time wind would hit my eye, it would shoot a pain right to my temple. So they thought that there was something really bad going on behind the eye. 
that they didn't have the equipment in the infield care center, you know, you need some pretty, you need to get a CT scan. Uh, that's, n no track has that, and it won't ever have that. It's, it's uh, something that the only way they were going to know is to, to put me through another scan and see. Uh, but by the time I got to the hospital, uh, an optometrist came in with her microscope, saw the metal, got it out, uh, a, a portion of it. She couldn't get the rust out. She said um, it would need a couple more days for that to harden, uh, to get out. Um, but once the metal came out, I felt a lot better. Uh, we went home. The, the CT scan showed that I was perfectly clear on the sinus part of it, which is good news. I thought I was going to have to do something about that as well. Um, so I was perfectly good with the sinuses. It was just uh, the, the metal that uh, was overlooked. But, you know, she was, had a pretty fancy piece of machine she was looking through to, to find it. So, um, you know, while I... It, Long story short, it won't keep me from going to the infield care center at any point. I mean, you know, I wanted to race, of course, no matter what. Uh, I felt like if I was going to be a liability, I would have pulled myself during the race. But, you know, there's protocols that we have to go through, and, and it's not just my safety that uh, it's got to be taken into account. I mean, we're racing around other guys, and that's one of the fastest tracks we go to. Um, you know, what if what if I caused a wreck early on? Um, you know, I don't need to be a liability out there. And, and obviously with this new format, you know, we hardly lost anything in points. You know, we still have a great shot to win a lot of races from here till the chase. So, you know, take the safe approach. We knew we found out the problem. It was too late by the time we found it. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, the staff that, uh, you know, looked after me last weekend was the same staff that was in the hospital with me for a few days in California last year. You know, they go above and beyond, and, you know, it's unfair to to put it on, whether it be the infield care center or, or um, uh, nurses that work with NASCAR, as put them under responsibility for not finding it because... It took a specialist to find it. Uh, you know, there were two separate, perfectly good doctors in the Infield Care Center of California that both of them could not see it. Uh, it took someone who was in the business of eyes to, to find it. And uh, so, I mean, it's it sucks because I wish I would have got it out on Saturday. I would have been fine for Sunday. But um, it's just it's part of it. It's just bad luck. Track hates me. Uh, let's go with uh, Hank. Raise your hand, Hank. Denny, over here, Hank Kurz with the Associated Press. Can you address how frustrating it has been? Almost every time I've seen you speak in the last year and a half, it's about medical things. Um, you know, on the one hand, just looking from afar, it's almost like you're falling apart, and you're not. It's just things have happened. But, you know, here you are. You want to come to the track, focus on winning races and challenging for the championship and stuff. How frustrating is it? when you get this thing on top of all the stuff last year to just have another thing to deal with, and you're probably the only driver that's carrying CT scans around with you. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's frustrating because I'm in great health. Um, I, I'll, I'll play all these drivers in any sport they want to play. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm in good health. It's just, I mean, literally, you know, last year, I got in a wreck and I hit the wall at a, the worst possible spot that that broke my back. And this year, something somehow flies into my eye in the, in the middle of a race weekend. And two really good doctors, it was so small, they couldn't see it. It, it took, you know, and it's just uh, really bad luck on that part of it. But, you know, as far as the health stuff, I, I you know, I feel better than I ever have. Um, Pilates has changed my life as far as my back is concerned. My back is no longer an issue, knock on wood. Um, but, I mean, everything's just – you hate getting attention for those reasons, but a lot of it is because we haven't won a whole lot over these last uh, year and a half. Um, we're going to change that this weekend. But it's just, you know, we're, we're getting headlines for, for reasons we, we don't like, and, and you hate to have them for that reason. But – uh, we're we're going to get back on track, um, and when we do, it's, it's it can be 
it can be really good for us and bad for the competition. We just got to get over these little little things that uh, are bothering us. I mean, I felt like we had the best car of our teammates um, for Sunday's race in California and, and just never got to get in the car to, to show it. Uh, you know, the 200 cars obviously looked very, very strong, and they were going to be tough to beat. But we, uh, I was looking forward to that race for a really, really long time um, and obviously going to have to wait, you know, one more year again. Go to Zach and then to Reed Spencer. Zach? Yeah, uh, Zach Halbert, NASCAR.com. Uh, Denny, how scary was it just to, you know, be in the infield care center moments before you were about to go out there and, you know, not really knowing what, what was going on? I mean, there's, there's certain things that you can play through, uh, but vision or something even greater than that, you know, is definitely not one of them. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the toughest part was, you know, obviously – I had an idea that, you know, the answer was going to be no. We, we never really asked, hey, am I okay to race until we had the meeting with Helton and the other guys. But, you know, I knew what the answer was going to be. You know, we, I wasn't able to leave the care center. And, of course, uh, I was getting the idea that, uh, you know, they told me to prepare a backup plan just in case. Uh, so when I talked to Darian, I told him, you know, I, I don't know what's going on, but they said to prepare someone else to, to run. Um, I, I called, of course, Helton and said, come rescue me out of the Sinfield Care Center and, and get me out of here let me race. But, you know, we had a good meeting with him and J.D. and, and the two doctors and myself in, in a room going through all the possibilities. And, and, you know, they felt like the symptoms that I showed at the time they said, if this was 3 in the morning, we would tell you to go to the hospital right now. Right now. Not in an hour from now. Go right now. Because we don't know if this is something, tumor, the, any of those things. We don't know what it is, whether the infection got to the back of the eyeball and was affecting my brain because I was getting those headaches along with it. Um, so they were looking out for me. And, and you know, it's, you can't fault any group of people. Um, yeah, it's hard for me to be selfish saying that I should be able to get in the car no matter what when they're trying to look out for, for my best interests. Reed, and then to the gentleman here in the black shirt. Go ahead, Reed. Uh, Reed Spencer with NASCAR Wire Service. Does the new championship format and the possibility of justifiable medical exceptions give you more peace of mind when seeking medical attention? And would it perhaps make it even more likely that you would seek that attention since you don't have the devastating consequences in the point standing? <coughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it does. I mean, this was a topic of discussion for all the teams and drivers uh, in the off season was whether, you know, having a child was going to be an exception or not. Uh, they, discern, they determined no, that wasn't. Um, but you know, with this new concussion policy and all that, with this baseline test that you now have and some of the hits that we're taking, the cars are going faster than they've ever gone. We're, the hits are a little bit harder than they used to be. Um, so the, you've got to build in some kind of protective bubble over the drivers when they have an incident that possibly they have to sit out because of a concussion and things like that. That, that would be the most likely reason a driver would have to sit out. My opinion would be concussion. That, that's going to be the big one going forward. Um, uh, but it's hard to say you, you can't be part of the championship picture because of something you know that's relatively out of your control, you know, your health. And in other sporting events, you can miss events and be fine and, and won't affect uh, what you got going on uh, for as far as the championship is concerned. So uh, I, I think it was time to, to update our sport in the direction that it's in now to where we're not all just going on vacation. Uh, you, you're not allowed to do that. But, uh, you know, when something out of the blue, this, you know, Mike Hilton explained it to me greatly right as soon as we got out of that office. This is why we built this system in place is for things like this. It's your season's not over. You know, he says, go win next weekend. We're everything's going to be fine. And so we'll uh, we'll try to do our, our best to do that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't think any driver – well, I hope this doesn't keep drivers 
from going to the infield care center and, and making sure they're 100% uh, before any event. I mean, it's, you know, drivers are going to drive through being sick and under the flu and things like that. You can do that, um, but you, you can't mess with your vision. Uh, that's, that's all we've, that's what we've got to go off of uh, when we're driving these cars. And so, uh, especially at a racetrack like that, it, it can't be compromised. Mine was. So, um, hopefully the driver still will trust in the process that, that is out there for him. Let's go to Adam and then Shannon and Nate. Adam? Denny Han uh, it's Adam Haynes for the Danville Register and B. Uh, with the new qualifying procedures changing, you know, how big of an effect will, could that have on this race where your starting position is so important and integral to where you finish? Uh, it's going to be important. Um, you know, there's, I think there's about four to five pit stalls at this racetrack that are prime real estate, I guess you could say, um, that you want to be in that group. Uh, obviously, the number one is the best pit stall, uh, but there's there's others that are on timelines that really are, are beneficial. Um, but we've seen in the past guys come from the back and win. Uh, I think that the cream is going to rise to the top of this racetrack no matter what. Your same five to six guys are going to be in the mix no matter where they start. Um, so, I mean, while it is critical uh, to get one of those pit stalls, that would be the only – disadvantage I, i'd say if you if you we somehow qualified 30th you know the only disadvantage we would have would be on pit road uh we we could make up that position those in 500 laps uh, on the racetrack so although it's important it's not totally critical here go to shannon and end with nate shannon shannon spake espn hi denny um just wondering i know you said that there was some rust in your eye what day were they finally able to get that rust out is there any Irritation, pain right now. Uh, did they give you any antibiotics just yeah. for an infection purposes? Um, so we went back on Monday um, to go over the, the sinus stuff. And, and a lot of reason, that's why there was nothing said by me or anyone else after all this was going on. So we s still had to clear up whether sinuses were related or not. Uh, although at the hospital they found the metal and I felt better instantly, that doesn't mean that that was the whole problem. So we had to go through two more days of testing in Charlotte to realize that you know the sinus part was okay. Um, they got everything out uh, on Monday. Um, and basically, around the around the metal, uh, it built a rust ring. So there was like a ring of rust around it. So they needed time for that to to harden for them to pick that out. Um, so once you got that out, I felt better yet. And so that's why nothing was said for a few days is because we're still, you know, I don't want to be speaking out of, out of line and not knowing exactly what I'm talking about uh, until I know exactly what the problem was. So uh, we didn't know that until Wednesday when we finally got cleared and, and they ran all the tests again to, to, to make sure that we were 100%. So, um, you know. I don't need to really justify a lot to a lot of people. Uh, I think the important people are, are NASCAR, my team guys, and things like that. Um, you know, I don't – my health is my business, and so um, I, I'll, I'll give you all the facts and, and let you sh sift through them uh -huh, and do the best you can with them. But, you know, really I didn't know everything that went on until Tuesday to Wednesday. Final question, Nate. Uh, Nate Ryan, USA Day Sports. Uh, kind of following up on that, Denny, I think you may have answered it somewhat, but I'm sure you saw Dale Hunter Jr.'s comments Tuesday that he felt as if uh, the perception was bad for you and for NASCAR uh, and kind of intimating that you were being left to twist in the wind a little bit and speculation and all that. D do you feel like your reputation was hurt a little bit by this? Did you hear things that, that upset you? And... Um, I, I guess that's it. I mean, I guess b b both of those things, if you just to address that. Um, I'm going to try not to get mad. Um, you know, like I, like I just said, you know, my health is my business. But what if it was cancer or tumor? I didn't have to, I don't have to tell anyone that. It's my business. Um, people 
who think negatively of me or, or think that, you know, we, we sidestep some kind of drug test or something is ridiculous. It's, it's, I'm in the, one of the top three cars in NASCAR. I'd have to be an absolute moron, moron to risk that. I have a daughter that I got to provide for for a really long time. And for people to question who I am inside and outside of the race car, I've never done anything to even put that in question. I go to Bobcat games. I go out and I hang out with friends out in public. I don't, I don't stay tucked in my motorhome. I don't stay tucked into my house. It's not what I like to do. So because I'm out there a little bit more, people think I go out and I party. I got a, they, I got a wake up call because I don't drink at all hardly, ever. I've never done drugs, ever. I'm as clean as they come. I don't know why people question who I am outside the racetrack because I worked too hard to get here, for one, to throw it all away. And if anyone has any questions about that, they can ask me directly. People who assume, people think, you know, like that. Because I'll tell you, but it's, it bothers me that my character is questioned. Um, and people think that there's some kind of conspiracy because, like I said, I've worked too hard to get here, and it's, it's what I've wanted to do since I was five years old. There's not one thing in the world that I would do to switch positions with anyone in the world because I I've, I've just feel that lucky. And so, you know, I'm done justifying and, and defending myself on, on those things. I'm not going to let those people... Uh, uh, drag me down. It's uh, it's just frustrating because just because I'm out there a little bit more in the public, you know, it, it, it just that bugs me because I'm a human being and I and I like doing fun things. You know, if people think I'm, I have to go out and I and I go have to go out and drink to have fun. They're wrong. They haven't hung out with me because I don't. So. Um, it's it's just bother it's it just bothers me because there's uh, you know people that like to make rumors and and of course within our NASCAR community rumors become truth when enough people say it and so um, I'm done. One other question to ask you: You got room for another Martinsville grandfather clock? I'm gonna win it this weekend. I promise. Okay, very good. Thank you, Denny Hamlin, for coming in. School project. School. School project. Hmm? Yeah, I'm good. Next up is Daryl Wallace Jr.